All right, okay, hello. Thanks you everybody for joining. Sorry about that little delay. We were having just a small technical issue, but it'll be worth it because we have a very, very fun stream today. Uh, with us, we have Craig from unstructured.io. Um, Craig was one of the founding engineers and now leads their infrastructure team. And as the name of their company might suggest, they do very, very cool work with unstructured data. Um, obviously something all of us deal with as machine learning engineers um, in a lot of our different domains. Uh, there are clearly loads of issues that we have to deal with kind of manually writing code and scripts and all these different processes to handle and parse our unstructured data and unstructured is trying to solve that for us and open sourcing a lot of their code to help us do it. Uh, thanks for joining us, Craig. Uh, thanks. That's, that's an awesome intro. Uh, don't think I could have said it better. Um, um, yeah, so, uh, we are all about, uh, easing the, you know, the, the amount of time it takes it, it, that pain point of, of processing raw documents and, and having them into, uh, better inputs for whatever downstream, uh, applications, um, uh, you might have. Um, so, um, I've got a few slides here and then I wanted to jump into a, a demo. Um, so I just wanted to make sure, uh, okay, cool. I see the, the slides are now, now, uh, being shared. Um, so, uh, um, so yeah, um, uh, uh, so, all right, let's, let's jump into it. Here's, here's the agenda. Um, and, uh, uh, away we go. Um, and, oh, thanks so much also for, for having me on. I really appreciate the, the opportunity to, to share, um, to, uh, to, to share what we're doing. Um, okay. So, um. I uh, briefly want to talk about Unstructured, the company, and then the rest of the talk will be talking about the open source tools and, and running into going through a demo. Um, so Unstructured.io, uh, um, we're a seed stage uh, startup, uh, started just uh, seven uh, short uh, months ago. Um, as has already been mentioned, you know, we're really focused on this problem of helping uh, users and organizations process their raw documents in whatever formats that may be. Um, so I, I guess a quick, a quick, uh, <laughs> quick sidebar there. What is a raw document? Um, so that could naturally be like the documents we're commonly familiar with, like uh, PDF, Word doc, PowerPoint, email, HTML, XML, text, uh, images like PNG, JPEG. Um, that's kind of where we're starting. And, and we also have a, a strength, natural strength and natural language process capability. So we're really focused on extracting out the clean text, but we're definitely be moving beyond just uh, pure NLP uh, as, as we move forward. But down the road, raw documents could really be be anything from like M MP3 or audios, uh, video, um, the raw drone footage, uh, that type of thing. Um, so uh, also a uh, quick uh, pitch for the, the company here. Um, we're engaged with uh, both private and public sector partners to help them with their, uh, their pre-processing, uh, pipeline challenges. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, uh, you know, please, uh, reach out to, to me, uh, at Craig at unstructured.io. Um, also we're easy to find, uh, we have a public Slack, so we're easy to find, uh, from our, our GitHub page. Um, so also encourage you to, to, to reach out there. Um, all right, so let's let's move on to the uh, the open source and community side of things. Um, so, um, our uh, um, yeah, again, easy to find. Our core repo uh, is named uh, Unstructured, uh, where our core library, I should say, that basically enables a lot of capabilities in some of our other repos. You'll find some of our repos are focused on domain specific problems like processing SEC filings or a general pipeline to basically throw any MS Office document at it or PDF or image and just get back like uh, some sort of structured data. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll see those repos as well. Um, but, you know, if you just want to start writing Python code and quickly try out see its capabilities, uh, unstructured is, is the unstructured uh, repo uh, is, is the, the place to, to start. Um, all right, we'll keep keep rolling. I promise. Uh, promise for not that many slides. Um, so, uh, wanted to come back to again what what the mission that we're really focused on here. It's to reduce the amount of time it takes a data engineer to pre-process raw documents for downstream applications by ninety percent. Uh, so traditionally, uh, 
data engineer or data scientist has a bunch of PDFs thrown at them and they really only care about certain sections, like if they're analyst reports, maybe they just want price targets and summaries or something, or, or maybe they want a lot more, but they immediately start scouring the internet for parsing rules and um, guessing like some members of the audience have been there, right? And that, that kind of sucks. That just takes time. And it's not the interesting downstream problem that you, that you want to be spending your time on, but you have to do it, right? And so we're trying to really um, uh, en enable users to get past that, <laughs> that initial pain of, let me, just, let me just get to the actual data that, that's in my raw, raw documents. All right. Um, and so to, uh, to drill down on what it means to us, what pre-processing means, uh, we break it into three stages. So there's a partitioning stage, a cleaning stage, and a staging stage. So with any of these stages, we have what are called bricks. So different uh, pieces of logic that you might want to apply uh, in the, the pre-processing pipeline API. So uh, at a really high level, a partitioning brick, um, I think in the, the image case probably is a, is a good place to, to think about here. So say you have a, say you have a scan of a, a newspaper article, partitioning would be things like putting rectangles or bounding boxes around the different columns of text so that they're, you know, properly, properly, uh, segmented from each other so that they're able, they're able to be OCR independently, like that type of thing. If it's just text to text, it may be identifying as something as a title, uh, or, or is it, is it, or is it a narrative text uh, item? Um, once you have those core uh, elements that have been partitioned, the next phase is uh, 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 what we call cleaning bricks. So this is, again, a lot of that like um, classic parsing that you would have to take care of that's not a whole lot of fun, maybe writing regexes and things um, to strip out headers and footers or page numbers, um, uh, being able to separate paragraphs, um, those types of things, like we provide uh, a, a bunch of sort of uh, helper functions basically to, to get you through this cleaning stage uh, a bit more efficiently. Um, and I'd say also just the core way that we tend to break down elements into different types that also goes a long way already, even before you start applying uh, cleaning bricks. Um, and then finally, the last section here is a uh, staging brick. So staging bricks just means, okay, we have the data, it's ready to go. Now let's just pre uh, apply a quick transformation to get that uh, content ready for the next step. So the next step may be a labeling task. I want to label some data in Label Studio. Um, it may be, I'm going to be sending these to a, a, a BERT model. And so I need to tokenize them appropriately. Um, and, and that, uh, and make sure they don't, you know, exceed a certain length. So, um, those type, those types of steps, uh, are handled in the, the staging bricks. And again, this is all about enabling the user to as quickly get the data in the format they want for their downstream tasks that, uh, frankly to them are probably more interesting than just handling these, uh, uh, raw documents. Um, so. This uh, is all documented too. Um, so at this point, I'll, I'll just shift and uh, cool. Um, so I, I wanted to, uh, sorry, I should have gone back here. Um, if we're on the unstructured repo uh, itself, um, if, uh, so uh, some, some documentation here, the, the bricks in detail, uh, full API documentation uh, is linked from here. Um, and uh, these bricks and the different stages um, are, are spelled out uh, here. So partitioning, uh, cleaning, um, and, and staging. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, I think that, that'll help as we, as we move through the demo too in, in terms of the, the different steps that, that we'll, we'll be taking. Um, so, all right, yeah, like I said, not my slides and uh, I will now move around some Chrome tabs to jump into this demo. So uh, bear with me a moment. Okay, so uh, for this part of the demo, um, I'm actually just going to be running through a notebook that's in another one of our open source uh, repos. Um, and that is called uh, Pipeline SEC Filings. Um, 
the goal here is to uh, basically extract the natural language content out of uh, certain SEC filings, notably um, uh, 10Ks, 10Qs, or annual reports, quarterly reports, and S1 filings, uh, which are the filings uh, that um, uh, are filed when a company goes uh, public. Um, and so, um, and so, uh, yeah, so the notebook here is just going to be in this pipeline notebooks directory. And, um, there is a particular significance here ab about the name of this directory and our other pipeline, uh, re repositories, anytime there's this pipeline notebooks directory, it means that any pipeline that exists there is the source of truth for an API that basically can be converted into a web API uh, from uh, with our tooling, and we'll get into that as well. There's also exploration notebooks, which can also be uh, useful, but the pipeline notebooks are the the source of truth uh, for for a full pre-processing API for a particular domain. Um, so this is a pr pretty specific domain, right? Processing uh, SEC filings. Um, so this is the notebook. Um, so I will, uh, so I do have Jupyter Notebook running here. Um, and it looks like you all can see that. Um, so, uh, so go, we're going to go ahead and, uh, fetch a, a document, uh, or a raw filing, I should say from, from the SEC website. So we have this, uh, helper function, uh, to do that. Um, I am cheating a little bit here. Uh, the, the one that's checked into the repo, um, fetches the most recent annual report, uh, well. Um, uh, of course, thanks to the demo gods, one was published just a couple of days ago. So this is now out of date. So I have got, uh, got the original one that was processed here from, from 2021 here. Um, so I'll go ahead, uh, and fetch that. Um, so we can see what we're, what we're looking at here and the, the document is, uh, kind of a mess, um, but it is text, right? And so this is. So we're basically in the problem space of, of what we think of as text to text. We're going from raw text and we're going to have clean text outputs. So that's all great. This is, this is the kind of output that we, uh, um, want to get to. Um, and so we have a, uh, uh, HTML document sure that's, that's part of the core core library here. Um, and so, um, so we can actually uh, run that through, uh, run that through um, at least the portion of it that's uh, not like preamble, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, and just to quickly see what we've got after we've processed the document. Um, so we now have HTML pages, uh, there's only one page, but they're um, elements, right? Uh, we have a, like this large array of, of elements, and this is just selecting out a, a few of them. Uh, and seeing what we have, and it, and it looks like, uh, basically, like looks like nice, clean text. Um, so, uh, so that's good. Um, and uh, and where unstructured is is providing some structure here to this outputs is also, uh, you know, it's it's declaring what kind of text this is. Is it does it see it as a title text or as a as a narrative text? um, text element. And there, there are other elements, uh, as well. And, um, actually this is probably <laughs> a good moment to, to quickly take a segue into, into what those other elements are. Um, so, so back in our documentation page here, um, we can see the, the sort of core elements, uh, that unstructured tracks. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, for now, um, we're, we're a little more natural language, natural language oriented, um, coming soon, there will be, uh, support for tables and additional elements. Um, but this is sort of the, the core collection of elements that we have right now. And, and so, and the, so narrative text, uh, and title, um, you know, being the two that we're seeing, uh, here. Okay. Um, continuing on. Um, so, uh, Again, partitioning, determining if something is a title or not from, from the, uh, natural language process perspective, right? So we have some, some, uh, partition bricks there. So one is it will title. This is just showing what's going on underneath the, the, the hood a little bit as we determine, you know, whether something is, is, is a text uh, or title or not. 
does this look like narrative text? Uh, no, it does not. Is this possible narrative text? Uh, this longer paragraph? Um, uh, it is. Um, okay. Well, that's great. Um, so getting back to the, the problem statement of what are we trying to do here? And so now let's switch to what an actual SAC filing looks like. Um, so this, uh, this company, uh, should Royal Gold. Um, so, uh, in a standard filing, there's a, a number of these different sections. Um, the way they're formatted can vary widely from, from, um, one company to another, or even one annual report to another. Um, but generally they all are going to have for sure these item, uh, these item headings, uh, which is re required as, as part of the filing. And so the goal here is we basically want to pull out the narrative text here. So this, this item a risk factors. So we can see there's, there's a whole bunch of text here that, uh, um, you know, is that is calling out the, the risk factors and it's, uh, normally, uh, you know, uh, to really call every single risk here to a business is, is probably going to take a, a few pages. Um, and, uh, and, and so, um, and we'll want to be able to do the same for, for, for other, uh, so just uh business discussion, what, what does the business do? Um, and you can imagine for downstream applications, you know, as these particular, um, sections evolve, let's say that can be a pretty big signal as to, as to some underlying trends, uh, that are occurring, uh, with the business. Um, okay. So, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the Jupyter notebook. So, um, so one thing is, okay, we know we care about items. And so we are going to use a little, uh, regex here to actually see, um, if we can, um, pull out, uh, pull out, um, those item headings. And, uh, we definitely pulled out a, a couple here. Um, and we took advantage of the fact that we know whether different items are titles or not, and then pretty much applied our regex. Uh, but you can see we didn't quite grab them all. And, uh, essentially what's happening there is, is there's sort of extra white space, uh, mixed in that, that basically was, um, getting in the way here. And so this is, um, uh, uh, again, you know, points to some more, um, sort of utility of the library here. Uh, we have this clean extra white space function. So of course you could write your own in regex, um, or, you know, uh, but it's also just nice to have one that, that works, uh, right off the bat. Um, and so now after we, uh, strip extra white space throughout the, throughout the, uh, heading itself, um, we've narrowed down, uh, into the, into the individual items. Um, okay. So, um, we'll just click through here. And, uh, so now let's actually, you know, for one of the fun parts, uh, extract the risk factor section and, uh, see what we get. And you should carefully consider the risks as described in the section, which I believe should, you know, match up, uh, with our, our risk factors, um, section. And so, so that, that look, that looks correct. Um, okay. So at this point we basically have, uh, our content. Um, however, we may need to, uh, stage that content and apply some staging bricks to get it for ready for the next particular phase. So, um, one thing we might want to do is we might want to take these, um, in, we might want to take these, uh, different, um, uh, paragraphs and import them into a labeling tool like label studio and build a model, you know, for something, I mean, it could be sentiment or something more sophisticated related to finance. Um, that would be, you know, above my, above my pay grade. Um, but, um, so, um, so again, we provide that these, uh, uh, these staging bricks and they'll take, uh, the core elements and what we call the initial structure data and basically convert it into the transform it into, uh, the, the, uh, format that that's going to work for, for, for label studio. Um, and I, uh, it's actually super quick to run label studio locally and import this data, like literally a couple of minutes. So. 
Um, I apologize. I don't have that running, but if you're going to try any of these out, I, uh, don't be, um, yeah, uh, don't be afraid of getting this into labor label studio. It works really well and super fast. Um, okay. So we have our core functionality, uh, but now like we want to put this into basically like a formalized pre-processing pipeline API. And so the other convention here is that we have this, uh, this idea of, um, again, converting, uh, taking the notebook, converting it into a web API. Well, to do that, we actually don't want to, we don't care about every cell in this notebook. There are certain cells that actually matter to the definition of the API. And so by convention, those cells are simply just have, uh, this comment, um, pipeline, uh, API. And so, um, uh, so this is just sort of the standard uh, imports, and I'm just going to click through and get to the uh, the uh, the main function itself here. Um, so every pipeline notebook by convention will define this pipeline uh, API, um, and so uh, our tooling again can take the notebook, and this is what keys it into like aha, this is the function I'm going to be calling from the from the from the web. Uh, API. I don't really want to say REST API because there's no state. It's like there's no resource to put or uh, or anything like that. It's purely stateless. Um, so um, so there's conventions that a pipeline API the signature follows. So this particular API is expecting to get some sort of text. Remember, this is a text to text use case. So we're going to get a text that's basically a string of the entire file contents. Um, we're going to allow the user to request a different response type. They can have an app, they can have a JSON, they can have a CSV, um, they could have a response schema for uh, initial structured data, which is just our core schema, um, or they could request a schema for say Label Studio. Um, so these are all sort of standard things that could go into a pipeline API. Uh, then finally, there's any number of these optional parameters that uh, if they're, um, uh, that can get passed through uh, as well. So in this case, section is one of the parameters saying, what section do you want to extract uh, from this filing? Do you want to extract risk factors, business, legal proceedings? Um, you can also pass, you know, underscore all if you just want to get all sections uh, um, relevant to the filing. That's 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 also uh, an option uh, as well. Um, and so and so uh, that's that's basically. Uh, that's 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 basically all that's going on there, and uh, you know, checking for different. Uh, so really, not not a whole lot of, even though the <laughs> maybe in um, uh, more than necessary lines of code, but um, showing that we can just sort of output different uh, um, schemas for for different requests. So I'll go ahead and define that in, in the notebook. Now let's actually uh, see this in action. In this notebook, we already just defined X to be this uh, Royal Gold's uh, 10K file in. And so, um, so let's, let's uh, try it out. Um, and uh, so it, like our, pay, our pipeline API uh, is basically uh, doing uh, what it should be. Um, so, um, so yeah, that covers that. And, um, at this point, uh, I will shift a little bit. Um, so if we go back to the, uh, the repo here of pipeline SEC filings, um, when you convert, when you convert it into, uh, an API, then you can hit it like any other web API, mostly with, with, with a curl command. Um, so by the way, if this is running live, uh, for anyone to, to hit, um, and, uh, so. Uh, if you actually just want to see the content, you can copy this curl commands locally and and uh, get the actual content. Um, but what I'll illustrate here is that we're going to create that API locally and then also verify that we can we can get those those results. Uh, so let's see. Um, so what's going to be happen happening here is um, uh, this. The, if you'll recall, the, the name of the notebook is, is pipeline section. So section is basically signifying the name of the API. So um, this is basically where uh, the, the uh, 
fast API code uh, lives. Um, I'm going to go ahead uh, and remove that. And now, uh, let's see. If I do a make an API, um, this is uh, this is using this uh, unstructured API tools library to basically um, uh, examine the pipeline notebooks directory for every uh, notebook that's defined, create a, uh, a web API uh, for one of those. So now just to confirm that that thing actually got created, um, uh, it, it did. So, um, uh, so that's all good. So now let's actually, um, and I guess it probably would help uh, to actually examine the contents of like what's actually in that thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and you can see this initial boilerplate that this file is indeed, you know, generated by um, unstructured API tools. And then it basically, uh, um, it, it, it builds all of this stuff for you, basically. Like all that, it can take one or more filings as inputs uh, with the text files parameters. Um, and then you can, per the pipeline API, pass along the format, the schema, and then any of the uh, optional parameters that existed before, um, by convention, an M underscore parameter in the pipeline API is is the M underscore is removed here. So, um, so you know any number of these could exist for any API uh, that gets created. So, the user doesn't have to worry about you know writing this fast API. If this is the the, the main uh, pattern you know they they care about. Um, so let's go ahead and see that in action. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So one of the make targets here is run web app. So uh, I'll go ahead and start the web app locally. Okay. Uh, I'm running. Um, so in the separate terminal here, uh, I will go ahead and post uh, this handy, whoops, uh, curl command. Um, uh, I think I... Uh, that weather. Um, okay, so I'm not sure what happened there, but anyway. This is the cut and paste working. And uh, so we can see that, you know, we've hit the local target. Um, the uh, the versioning of the route is take care of, taken care of for us. That's tied to the repo and then the, the name of the, the route itself. Um, so, um, okay. That's kind of the uh, in-depth look into what pipeline, you know, what pipeline APIs for us and, and how we think about building these uh, and building these uh, over time. Um, and I guess, you know, from the ML ops point of view, there'll be more, you know, the, the nice thing about this is you have, uh, you have this API ready to deploy, right? And you can containerize it uh, however you want to. Um, okay. So that's all good, but Everything aside, you don't have to follow the pipeline repo convention at all. Like you can just use the unstructured library as is uh, for for your own use cases. So, um, so I'll just um, uh, you know quickly show show this in action just to basically show you know how useful it is just kind of uh, out of the box. Um, so let's see. I'm, I'm in the unstructured repo. Okay. Uh, in the example docs folder, uh, have some uh, sample, <laughs> some some actual PDFs. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at that. Uh, so, um, um, so I'll go ahead and, and start up Python. Um, and so, by the way, before I before all of this, I did a make install to install all of the core dependencies 
that are necessary to, to get this to run. Um, and there has been, uh, uh, um, it, admittedly, uh, it can be a little bit, uh, it's, it hasn't been, it hasn't been super smooth getting all the dependencies in, installed. And so, uh, another quick plug here is, is, is on, in the unstructured repo, uh, we've, we've recently updated, oops, that's not the unstructured repo. Uh, let's go to the unstructured repo. Um, in the unstructured repo, we, we've, we've, uh, done really, we've tried to clear up some of the confusion. So you will need some core libraries on your OS and those are called out here. And to install with the ability to run uh, image inferences locally, um, you basically need the local inference uh, uh, um, extra installed, and that that's if you're 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 doing a pip install. Um, anyway, uh, coming back to um, uh, where was I? Too many too many tabs within tabs here. Okay. Um, if you've cloned the project, you can do a make install local inference and, and you'll be good to go. That was basically, that was basically the aside. Um, okay. But let's actually try this out. Okay. So I got my, uh, auto partition, um, <clears throat> function or that basically can partition any file type it detects the uh, file type file type so let's go ahead and give it a try uh, on the um, on this uh, particular uh, PDF and uh, it can take a few seconds here on uh, CPU okay it looks like uh, looks like we've got it um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and make use, uh, uh, of a, um, of one of our staging bricks here right away to kind of examine the content. And so, uh, uh, that's called it converts to ISD. So that will get it into a, a JSON serializable format, um, that basically includes, you know, all the content you probably would care about and all the metadata for that particular, uh, element. Um, so now, uh, actually convert those elements, uh, into what we'll just call ISD elements now to see, um, let's actually examine what we've got here. Uh, and, um, and we're, we're looking good. We, we've got what the actual text is, we've got the type and then the associated metadata, uh, for that particular, um, element, uh, as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And again, back in the unstructured repo, this is even just checked directly into the repo and, uh, also, uh, a hat tip to, uh, layout parser. Um, we've definitely be, been standing on the shoulders of giants here for, for some of the work and how, and how we've been thinking about, uh, processing, uh, documents, uh, as well. Um, and so this is, this is kind of the, some of the content, uh, we just pulled out there. Um, okay. So that was the, uh, that was the, 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 the quick pitch to, to really, uh, emphasize that you can use unstructured as a standalone, standalone library, no pipeline APIs needed. Um, with that said, let's shift to, uh, another, uh, pipeline API. Um, okay. So, uh, bear with me again, as I uh, as I go through the, um, get the, the browser tab in the right place. Okay. Okay. So, um, we had other, uh, public repo out there, uh, pipeline OER. Um, uh, and this is basically demonstrating the processing of army evaluation reports. Um, this is not a real one. This is a fake one, of course. Um, but this is what they, they look like. Um, and so this is before the initial pipeline we were showing, 
uh, text to text. This is image to text, you know, or mixed image and text, like a PDF can be to to text. Um, so that's that's the problem we're solving here. Um, and so I'm not going to go through this quite as heavily in heavy detail as the SEC filings website, and, and instead we'll just uh, go through the the uh, kind of uh, scan through the notebook here. Um, but this is like the kind of um, the output that we're looking to generate, right? So we have this, it could not even, it, it, um, may just be a pure image. And this is, this is what we, um, this is the structured data that we want to extract. And so using our standard uh, partitioning bricks, we can um, basically uh, apply a layout model on it and uh, pull out the uh, individual text elements from that. Um, uh, and so, what those sort of at that step of putting boxes around text can look something like this. Um, and I'm going to focus here on the significant duties and responsibilities. Um, and you can see the, the text has been pulled out uh, as an element. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, however, um, the, the real content for this valuable, uh, um, for this uh, key, I guess, is, is really this section here. And so, you know, we'll need to apply some cleaning to 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 tone in into the actual content here. Um, and again, this is where the the, the cleaning bricks uh, can come in handy. And we're basically going to repeat this pattern uh, for for the other pieces of content uh, that we care about um, with within the uh, within the document. Um, so, uh, yeah, and similar to the um, uh, SEC filings pipeline. You, again, you can see that we're defining a, a pipeline API here. And so this is, um, uh, sorry, this is actually defined. This is one of the uh, elements um, this Jupyter cell will get exported um, when, when with along with the pipeline API. So this is needed for the pipeline API. Um, and it has like some key logic in here to, to get radar sections. Um, I'm going to scroll over staging bricks. I think we've got that we can stage for different use cases now. Um, here's uh, uh, another uh, helper function uh, that we'll need to export to structure the the, 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 the content. Um, mostly what we're doing here is just basically applying cleaning bricks to all the content that, that we've pulled uh, out of the um, out of the document. Um, some extra work around checkboxes, um, but this is also uh, included uh, in the library. And then finally, the uh, the API uh, itself, uh, which again can be converted into that web API. Um, and so, uh, uh, at the end, we're we're left with this uh, this nice clean JSON. Um, so uh, that's an example of a sort of a full, uh, very in this case, very domain specific uh, use case. Uh, for uh, uh, for pre-processing pipeline. Um, all right, so um, I think we're doing pretty good on time here. I did want to highlight uh, a couple of, uh, uh, I think, more uh, useful references um, in, the, in sort of the, the remaining time here. Um, so uh, we did recently just release uh, yesterday. Um, uh, the pipeline general, uh, um, uh, we haven't, <laughs> we need to update our, our document here. Um, so let's see, just type, um, and so, uh, so much like, um, you've already seen the, uh, unstructured. So going back here, um, going back to Jupyter lab, right. Uh, it basically provides this capability uh, in, an, in an API to, de to, to, to detect what it is uh, and uh, return the results. Um, and so if you don't even want to mess with Python or anything, you can just clone that API, uh, run the app locally, and then just you know hit, hit row, uh, row um, throw files at it and get structured content uh, back. Um, and so, um, yeah, so in this case, uh, an email file uh, is being posted. Um, 
So uh, wanted to, to mention that. Um, and then one additional thing to mention here is uh, uh, that might be a little easy to overlook. Um, um, in the unstructured repo and the examples folder, there's a couple of really cool end-to-end -end, uh, notebook demos. So in the sentiment analysis notebook, we're basically leveraging the SEC filings work that we uh, had done to, to pull out um, different sections, then using those sections to, to train a sentiment analysis model in Label Studio. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, and then very quickly testing out that, that, uh, uh, that model with, with, um, with outputs from, from unstructured. So, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, creating the, the data for, for the label studio here is basically just, uh, um, taking advantage of that stage for label studio brick within label studio. You can, uh, basically label the data, you know, label 20 different items in, in, in less than 10 minutes and then use that data to, to train a sentiment model. And so end to end, once that's all done and <laughs> just quickly scroll to the, uh, to the, the punchline here, right now we can actually see it in action against, um, different content that we've, that we're, we've pulled out, uh, with unstructured. Um, so that, so that's a really cool antenna notebook. Um, and then, uh, really quickly, uh, another one here is uh, Argilla summarization. Um, and, uh, basically this is training a, a summarization model, uh, with the, with the help of, uh, Argilla and hugging face. Um, but it's using unstructured to pull content, uh, from this, uh, from the, uh, Institute for war uh, website to basically, uh, get updates on the, on the war, uh, in, in Ukraine. Um, and so the, so sort of unstructured being to the left of everything, processing that raw document really kind of enables the ability to quickly build, uh, one of these summarization models. Um, and then, um, and then of course, you know, and then d deploy uh, and use it again, using unstructured, uh, uh, to parse out, uh, the, the raw content. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think I will, uh, I, I will pause there, especially, uh, give some time uh, for questions. I also want to thank everybody. Um, shout out again to our public Slack, please check that out. If you're interested in communicating with any of us, uh, in real time, um, and, uh, also stay tuned. We will be announcing a contest, uh, later this week, uh, um, to, uh, um, well, I won't go into details, but for contributions to the unstructured, uh, website. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks so much, Craig, for, for coming on and, and, and showing this to us. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and, um, hopefully I didn't get, hopefully I didn't lose too many people there. Uh, um, but really, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I think that was great. I was curious, what were you working on before you started to work at Crag? Like what was your kind of previous engineering uh, experience? Yeah, no, well, uh, sure. Well, I'm a back end engineer by trade. Um, so, um, and, uh, previously worked at a national language processing company I'll call primer.ai uh, most recently. Actually, I was there for five years and, and, and led a, a couple of uh, products uh, there, a um, couple of teams. Was that partially the impetus for for building this kind of tooling? Um, yeah, certainly it's it's adjacent um, in that, I mean, uh, Primer builds these awesome natural language processing applications. Um, you know, however, getting data into getting data into any any application can, can be a challenge when you're dealing with, with messy raw documents. And, um, and I think that's, that's, that's kind of a, a pattern, uh, that, um, that, that certainly, yeah, I, I had been aware of before moving mm -hmm. over to unstructured. Super cool. And, uh, when you were, as your team are kind of building out new integrations or new parsing capabilities, cause obviously there's sort of an infinite set of, of, um, unstru like ways unstructured data and, and NLP could come in. 
how are you kind of making those determinations? How are you deciding which to tackle next? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I mean, so, uh, I mean, in pure transparency and honesty, certainly what our partners are focused on will, 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 uh, um, will play a part of that. Uh, but we're very receptive to, um, you know, what the community is, is, is looking for, uh, as well. And also frankly, happy to take contributions. Um, I think one interesting integrate integration that came up recently is, uh, with, uh, Langchain. Mm. So Langchain is just a really cool, uh, way of, of, of taking a bunch of data and, and, and like, and, and kind of like super quickly, you know, training LLMs or, or, or building vector stores. And, and, um, and so we're sort of like a, a natural integration there. Cause some type some documents that are coming are just not going to be that clean and you don't want to throw them directly <laughs> at an LLM. And so, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so. So that so we're happy to to contribute uh, in, into that ecosystem and and um, and, and others. That's really cool. Next as well. I'm I'm curious if you it, unstructured focus is mainly obviously on the extraction of data from these unstructured uh, files, but does it also contribute to the editing of those files? For example, I know that working with Microsoft Word docs is notoriously pretty painful. Um, like they, they store the data not just in text, especially with formatting it in the way that um, kind of they they encode all that information. It's, it's hard to, for example, edit Word documents easily, for example, in Python while maintaining um, the formatting and the fonts and, and the boldings uh, across the document. Do you work, does Unstructured work with editing those documents or is it mainly just the extraction of the information? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I I, to, I think it we're not too concerned about the editing versus just pulling out the, the clean t content. So we're likely not going to be too focused on a doc. So that would be like a word doc to word doc yeah. uh, pipeline and probably not, probably not so much. Um, however, I mean, I mean, maybe to maybe some standard format. So maybe word doc does become a standard format that we want to export to from, from anything. And so then, so then maybe we, we, that, I mean, it's not without, you know, it's possible, I guess, but it's probably not going to be a priority. Have you at your team had at all had to worry about things like scaling issues, like just data that's larger than kind of the size of a computer can handle? And obviously in, in LP, that would be an enormous amount of data. But if you're working with like videos or images, is that been something you've had to contend with? Um, not yet. Um, yeah, to, to your point, I think uh, that the scaling challenges of having a, an API hosted, you know, in production, um, being able to throw, you know, many documents we're more around the the concerned about the i guess the volume than the than the size of an individual uh document um but i think i mean especially for now in the nlp space uh, to to your point uh, there there kind of would be probably easiest ways around it to, to chunk the, the documents into pieces mm. and are you planning on moving outside of nlp obviously this this makes a lot of sense in nlp um you could imagine extracting kind of really useful structured information from like voice calls and sales calls or customer support calls, things like that. Are you planning on moving outside of text domains? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so like our, our, uh, and the founding team, a lot of our natural strength and, and experiences is in NLP and there's clearly a ton of demand there and frankly, not a lot of great tools. So, you know, um, we're happy to, to, to cut our teeth there, but for sure we want to, uh, move on to through uh, other media types uh, as well and 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 not just like natural language but but mm -hmm. other uh, types of data as well super cool um i think those are all of the questions for now but uh it's pretty good timing we're, we're almost at the hour and thanks so much for for coming on is there anything else you wanted to share or kind of um so i've shared all the links for for unstructured with with the audience yeah no i the the one other thing um quick pitch is we also just dropped in a, a way to ingest uh, documents. So say you have a, a, a S3 bucket with a thousand PDFs and you just want to get a bunch of JSONs for them. We, we released a tool to do that easily. So in this sort of, uh, you know, in the goal of making things as easy as possible for users just to get to their data, maybe a, a quick pitch for that. And because we we anticipate working uh, more on that sort of um, ingest capability in the, in, the, in the near future as well. Uh, yeah, no, no other, uh, I think nothing else really from me. Um, but yeah, thanks again, Ben. Uh, it was really, really great to, to be on. 
yeah thanks so much for coming on and thanks for everybody for watching we'll see you in the next one